Hello, greetings, and welcome, everyone, to this news update. Today, we are talking about the Japan Mobility Show and how I think that could affect Aptera's future. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, yeah, so I can't lie, the uh, Japan Mobility Show had me just a little shook when it comes to Aptera. Uh, I sat down and digested it and was a lot less worried, but my initial reaction was not a calm one. Uh, as I take you on a journey through what I watched, tell me if you can see what my logic is before I share it with you, but I will absolutely explain it in due time. The first presentation I watched at the Japan Mobility Show was the Toyota Press Briefing. Sato Saicho was very confident and did not shy away from the topic of EVs in the way that Ford and GM have done very recently with their earnings calls and how several media outlets in the US have done with articles titled uh, EVs aren't working or hinting at the, uh, at the fact that there's no demand for EVs in general in spite of the fact that between seven, uh, 36 and 71% of people, depending on the survey and uh, who is asking what or how they grade it, are considering an EV for their next vehicle or have previously considered an EV and are bringing their thought process back around to it. Uh, yeah, instead of this like brain dead, tepid, tone deaf stance of EVs aren't working or profitable, so it must be what people uh, don't want. Uh, Sato Saicho opened with a line that at first I thought was kind of a slight against Tesla, but on further thought, it could be interpreted as a shot across the bow to legacy automakers as well. Uh, his quote was simply, we are making battery EVs like only a true car maker can. Uh, yeah, broski, this man is audacious and I love it. Uh, at any rate, the things about Toyota's presentation that stood out to me besides their CEO busting heads was there was this new software partner called Woven, uh, creating the Arene system for uh, Arene system for a Toyota so they can add an emphasis on hardware modularity with respect to their vehicles. As paraphrased from the presentation, Arene is our vision for the most programmable vehicle on the planet. Toyota's words there. If I were to give the presentation a theme, it would have been modularity and versatility of hardware and software. Now, Nissan's presentation had an admittedly very anime-focused presentation for a car company. Uh, the beats of the presentation felt more like sensationalized than Toyota's, like they were trying to uh, imbue a soul into their vehicles and help people attach to that soul and be compelled to buy their vehicles. Uh, yeah. I didn't buy that pitch personally, but all of their cars were very quirky and unusual and had a very like retro future feel. They really leaned into this uniqueness throughout the presentation, including how Uchida Saicho said in all seriousness the name Hyperforce with respect to their performance car without bursting into laughter. Uh, yeah, I gotta give him kudos for that personally because the laughter is exactly what happened when I first heard the name of this particular vehicle. Uh, they also leaned into what was, in my opinion, a very gimmicky, augmented slash virtual reality feel to their vehicles. Um, yeah, one thing that uh, I did think was really cool was the like the folding seats that they showed uh, in their minivan. Uh, I'll show like a little sidebar clip of it in, in pictures because I don't want to um, uh, inspire the ire of Toyota or Nissan or anybody for that matter. So yeah, the, I'm just gonna show pictures for the mobility show stuff. But yeah, the seat that folded under, it was basically a two person seat that folded down and became a one person seat that allows you to stretch out your feet and, and chill out. And it, it was cool, like it looked nifty to me. It was a very um, one person luxury recliner scenario. So yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, during the Honda presentation, Mibei Saicho, yep, I said that right. Mibei Saicho emphasized realizing dreams that were formerly impossible 
through increased capabilities of their vehicles. Uh, Cruise Origin is their autonomous vehicle and it reminded me a little bit of like a private jet cabin. Not that I've ever actually been in a private jet, mind you, but I have seen pictures. At any rate, they also talked about the sustainability and experimenting with different like materials and recycling of those materials. They also talked about uh, remote controlled robots and personal mobility like wheelchairs and smaller autonomous vehicles and you know kinds of things like that. They talked about the fact that they are now using AI, uh, generative AI in their processes to make their vehicles smarter, lighter, and faster. Uh, sorry, smarter, lighter, and safer. Um, I'm sure faster is in there somewhere too, but it, that, it wasn't in their actual presentation. Anyway, uh, they showed uh, off something that kind of pulled at my heartstrings, which is uh, which was a Honda Prelude concept. For those unaware, the Prelude, much like their other sporty car, the S2000, was one of the most beloved vehicles they have ever produced, and my second place favorite for cars I have ever driven. Uh, a drawback to this reveal, and why the reveal didn't make it to things like uh, the things I liked portion of the video, is they essentially copied the front hood and lights of a Ferrari I'm not going to say that word because I know I'm going to say it wrong, or a Toyota Crown uh, SUV for their refresh of the Prelude. And I personally think that the front end of that car is, uh, of both cars that I just mentioned are particularly ugly. Yeah, I, I, I can't deal with it. Maybe it's nice to somebody, but not to me. Uh, and I would have loved to uh, refund on my excitement for that fact alone, but this feeling was kind of compounded because I have every confidence that Honda could have taken EV seriously and produced this Prelude vehicle 10 to 15 years ago and used the Prelude's name as a test bed for their small electric platform and they would have been on Tesla's heels, but I digress. That it didn't happen and it still makes me sad to this day, but here we are. There were other presentations and I will link the ones that I actually looked at below. Uh, did you notice it? Did you see what I saw when I first saw these presentations that made me a little antsy? No? Oh, okay, well, here it is if you didn't. Uh, Toyota emphasized modularity and customizability and upgradability. Nissan emphasized unique design. Honda emphasized newer, lighter, recyclable materials and generative AI in their production process. If that sounds just like a company that we all know and love that I may or may not have mentioned recently as a few minutes ago, <coughs> now that uh, particular situation is what makes me uh, kind of concerned. Now, what makes me less concerned about these potential challenges to the Aptera brand is that while each company focuses on an individual aspect of what makes Aptera unique, and while a lot of the vehicles they showed were battery electric, none of them seem to have the full package like Aptera will. Uh, finally, I'm glad that there seems to be more seriousness in the transition to electric mobility in Japan. Uh, in case you guys do not know, their economy kind of revolves around vehicles in a way that no other country in the world does. If they didn't at least announce serious strides this year for the future that would have been battery electric in nature, I would not have been able to readily refute someone saying that Japan's automotive industry was going to come to a grinding halt. Now, four things that I liked this week. It seemed to be like Chris Anthony interview week, and I am absolutely here for it. Uh, Aptera Owners Club put out parts one to three of an interview with Chris Anthony, where they talked more details with respect to Aptera's financial situation. They also made sure to get nice and nerdy with the SMC part process, which was like the candy bar of the series to me so far. Uh, if you watch the videos, you will get that reference, but for now, just know that the series of videos are awesome. Offering insights to things up to and including the ATVM loan and the like, uh, the insights were fantastic, the interview was fun, and as usual, Aptera has fantastic Chris's. Transport Evolved also had an interview with Chris Anthony as well during the time slot they test drove the Aptera. It was another insightful and fun Q&A scenario that gave us a few more insights about Aptera, like how being a startup is teaching them how to deal with the challenges they will face later on. It was a fantastic, candid look at how Aptera does things and absolutely worth the watch. Uh, Tasty Live Trending, which is a name I still feel uncomfortable saying 
uh, probably because my wa mind wanders whenever I do, uh, released a video about Aptera that included an interview with Chris Anthony that asked the questions I think investors would want to know on a forum that several thousand investors tune into. I'm hoping that... Um, I'm hoping that this kind of moves the needle on the bigger investors interested in Aptera, but I get the feeling that this will also give exposure to new investors interested in the future of mobility. Uh, that's about it for this video. As usual, links to everything that I talked about is below. Thank you all for watching. Please help me please the algorithm by liking, subscribing, and sharing. I will catch you all next time. Thank you so much, and uh, have a great rest of your morning day, night, evening thing. Now, what makes me less concerned about these potential challenges to Aptera brand? Uh, bleh. Bleh. Stop it. Bleh. Okay. If you watch the videos, you will get that reference. But for now, just know that the series of videos uh, are like an awesome insight uh, offering thing to, uh, oh my goodness, broski, get it together. Mm. All right. All right, that's about it for this video. As usual, uh, links to everything that I talked about in this video are down below. Uh, thank you for uh, watching. Oh my goodness, get this intro, uh, get this outro, get the, get the outro, get the outro. All right. Thank you.